Uh, we'll start first with Dr. Carol Karp, who's going to be talking about, is tissue still the issue? Anterior segment imaging for management of ocular surface tumors. So my short title is, how can I see if danger is lurking? I have no financial interest to disclose. I do want to thank all of my fellows, research assistants, and my colleagues, and for all of you for this kind invitation. We'll start off with a case, a 28-year-old, a male who comes in with band uh, keratopathy. He has a history of HIV, and he had had his band keratopathy removed in the past, but, but it returned. And now the question is, are, are, are we worried about this? And how can I tell if something is going on? So how do I find and diagnose conjunctival tumors? The history, how long has it been there, has it come back? Clinical features and the course. I like to joke that I use a lot of women's intuition to figure out if something is malignant or not, and that works pretty well. And uh, now we're gonna talk about tissue, histopathological or optical. So impression cytology can give us the surface cells to tell us if there's malignancy on the surface, confocal microscopy, an incisional biopsy that I often do right at the slit lamp, as you see here, excisional in the, in the operating room with cryotherapy, and we'll talk about some imaging. The name's Bond, James Bond. So Bond has some magic glasses to see what's going on and see if danger is lurking. What about me? Well, I do have something, and that's my high-resolution OCT, which helps me see when danger is lurking on the ocular surface. So this started off as a custom device that Jay Wang, my biomedical engineer, built for us, and now I use a commercial uh, device, which has five to seven microns and gives me excellent resolution. So first, let's just look at the classic features of ocular surface squamous neoplasia on OSSN, and we see normal epithelium with an abrupt transition to thickened hyperreflective epithelium. So going back to our young man with band keratopathy, this is a, where we'll take our image, and this is the custom device, and what you see is an abrupt transition with thickened hyperreflective epithelium, and then this white stuff represents the band keratopathy. So this was biopsied in that location and showed intraepithelial neoplasia and band keratopathy. So OSSN was concealed on this surface. Here's another case of a gentleman who came in with a little opalescence on the head of his pterygium, which we frequently see. So when I scan him here, what we see is normal epithelium that's dark and thin, and then thickened hyperreflective epithelium with an abrupt transition on both sides. And then you see the pterygium there that has normal epithelium and this stringy hyperreflective tissue. So again, this case also had the head was ocular surface squamous neoplasia adjacent to the pterygium. Another gentleman, long-standing trichiasis with corneal scarring, rosacea, and just followed for his, his scarring, but looked a little fishy there at 6 o'clock. It's kind of granular in nature. And when I scanned right there, what we see is normal epithelium, an abrupt transition, and thickened hyperreflective epithelium on the cornea. So again, this was biopsied and confirmed that ocular surface squamous neoplasia was a lurking danger on this patient too. This woman came to see me. She had contact lens intolerance and had that little bump. The question was, is this uh, OSSN? So an OCT in this area shows that she has normal epithelium and that the lesion is below. And this is what you see with Salzman's. I removed it because she was uncomfortable for their contact lens. So. Everything was fine for her. Another referral for uh, a, a pigmented lesion. This shows us thin epithelium. This is consistent with the conjunctival nevus. We see these cysts. This is something that we recognize as a pink salmon lesion. And what you see here is these homogeneous, hyporeflective dark dots. This was 
biopsied and sent for flow cytometry, gene rearrangement, confirmed lymphoma. And then this pa patient I treated with um, external beam radiation, and you'll see that now it looks like the salmon patch is gone. And by OCT now, I can see that all those dark dots are gone below the epithelium. But here's another patient referred in for lymphoma. Hmm, it's kind of pink and yellowish. Is there any danger here I need to know? So I take out my OCT and I see a subepithelial lesion. This time there's kind of mm, hyperreflective lines and a little not dark schmutzy look here. So this is not homogeneous dark dots. This was amyloidosis. And then here's the last case here with a patient with a, we're sent in for OSSN. When he scanned, what I see here is normal epithelium on the edge, some slightly hyperreflective, but the main lesion is subepithelial. This is not OSSN, this was a melanotic melanoma, a big danger. So in summary then, ocular surface squamous neoplasia, we see an abrupt transition from normal to abnormal. We see thickened hyperreflective epithelium. In the pterygium, we see thin epithelium, which may be a little hyperreflective, but the main lesion is subepithelial. It's hyperreflective and stringy. In a lymphoma, we see a very homogeneous dark cellular dots. With amyloid, we see linear dots, and it's not homogeneous. Melanoma, we see normal epithelium with hyperreflective cellular infiltrate, and with a nevus, we see multiple cysts. So the take-home points are, like Bond, I need to know when danger is lurking. In Miami, I'm Juanita, Juanita Bond, and my x-ray glasses are my OCT. So OCT provides an optical biopsy with great correlation to histopathology, and it has revolutionized my practice of ocular surface oncology. Thank you so much for your attention.